I am Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup Strengths Explorer Series, recorded on February 21st, 2019. Strengths Explorer is a podcast series that dives deep into the 10 talent themes of Clifton Strengths Youth Explorer. I didn't say that right. It's actually the Clifton Youth Strengths Explorer, designed for adults who are interested in accepting, affirming, and growing the individual potential within a child. This series expands your language to describe what is right and strong in children ages 10 to 14, and it can go outside that boundary a little bit either way. To further your understanding, check out Gallup's book, Strength Based Parenting, available wherever books are sold. Or you can catch that on our shop site, shop.gallup.com. And today's theme is competing. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center. Just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs. You can also catch the video in both downloadable audio. We call that podcasting. All the cool kids are doing it. It's available on our site. Although, as of this moment, I have not put the Strengths Explorer buttons on the site. I just uh, emailed uh, one of our interns to get that done, so hopefully we'll have that up for you. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, we have all our podcasts available off our coaches blog. Just go to coaching.gallup.com. And if you have any questions, you can email us, coaching at gallup.com. Micah Librant is our host today. She's a workplace consultant here with me at Gallup. Micah, always great to have you, and welcome back. Thanks, Jim. Gosh, it's great to be back. For those of us who are following us live, you know it's been about a month since we were doing this, and it just feels great to be back in the swing of things. If you're listening in time-shifted mode, you didn't care. This just <laughs> You've been binging up. us for the last 12 hours. You should probably get a drink of water. We'll, we'll have all those folks too, Micah, who this is going to get a little bit out of order. We did we missed caring. Not that you care, but we missed that last week. We'll do it. it Date-wise, it'll be out of order, but we're here to talk about competing we don't have a lot of time, so let's dig in, Micah. What, uh, when we think about competing, what does this mean? So the theme of competing is all about seeing life as a game, seeing everything in life as a game, one that you feel great joy when you win. Um, kiddos with competing truly hate to lose. Uh, they're always striving for first place. I think sometimes what we miss in this is the um, truly significant motivational force that this talent theme has. Competing children are always... I think what wakes them up in the morning or even maybe figuratively wakes them up toward a challenge is this desire to win. It leads them to tackle things that others might not even attempt to do. Um, it's it's a hugely inspirational sort of talent. Micah, when we get, because some of these themes in Explorer have similar names is what we yeah. see. In, can you talk a little bit about that? How should we handle that? Well, you're probably hearing this right now. If you're familiar at all with Clifton Strengths, you're thinking, um, Micah, you did a lot of work saying don't map these to Clifton Strengths, but that sounds exactly like competition. Well, you're right. There are three themes out of the Clifton Strengths themes that are very, very similar. I would say it's probably achieving and achiever competing and competition, and future thinker and futuristic. Um, so this is one of those that is incredibly similar to those Clifton Strengths themes. Um, let's not try and hide that. These are nearly identical, but it doesn't mean that if you are a kid with competing, you will automatically be an adult with competition. It does mean that if you've learned to love and honor comp competition in an adult, you're already past go on doing that same thing for competing in a child. But let's remember the entire design of this is to admit that there are more broad broadly defined swim lanes for Strengths Explorer than there are for Clifton Strengths. And so it's about how do we spot where they are, admitting and understanding and embracing the fact that children are still have miles to go or kilometers to go since we're international in terms of their, their development. So competing is super similar to competition, but it's not prescriptive to say that they'll definitely lead with competition when they're an adult. There's all sorts of exit ramps and other places that they could go. Now, pretty exciting. Inside the book, we talk a lot about strength spotting. By the way, if you don't own the book, you should. It's a great reference uh, for a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about, a whole chapter on this idea of strength spotting. But when we think about strength spotting with those that have competing, what are we looking for or what could we be seeing? Sure. So there are probably kids who are paying attention to what other people are doing it and what other people are doing and how they're doing it. So you might notice that they are trying to imitate what they notice to be successful behavior of others. 
ultimately to outdo those others. This could be something like racing other children to the destination. Um, it might also just be, you know, wanting to competing doesn't necessarily have to be sports. I think we go there pretty often, especially with kids because they tend to spend more time outside. Um, I read an article lately that said that if an, if an adult tried to keep up with a kid physically, they would really be in that category of high endurance athlete. And my children are much younger than what this is designed for. But I even look at my one-year-old climbing the stairs every night and I think, wow, that's the equivalent of me scaling a mountain a couple times a day. So there is certainly that physical aspect, maybe trying to be faster, more graceful. But I also think maybe it's imitating the behavior of others that they that they notice wins them something. Um, there is that true delight in winning. Um, winning is wonderful. Winning has beauty for, for kids with competing. Losing is not an option or it is a really devastating one. Um, and we'll talk in a moment about how do you affirm this kind of talent. But part of it is acknowledging that there is real kind of soul level emotion connected to winning and losing. Um, other ways to spot competing, it might be a kid who's um, jumping in and taking action before they necessarily need to understand the activity or listen to the rules because again, they know that they can win. They're, they're less concerned with what the how the game is designed, maybe the strategy behind it, and more with their ability to finish and, and finish on top. And with that in mind, they also might be kind of fidgety until they're allowed to compete. They thrive on winning. They're always competing, even if other people don't realize it. Um, and I think it's important to realize that for fee for people, I was about to say for kids, but for, for humans who don't have competition or competing, this can look like it's sort of anti others, but it really isn't. It's, it's more about um, their place in benchmark to other people. And it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a, I beat you. It is that I am driven and motivated and inspired by winning in relationship to you. Um, so I think it is a confidence that you'll notice in a relationship to other people, real fire in their eyes when they're outperforming, when they're winning. Um, there's an energy, a, a focus, a really beautiful drive all the way to the finish. Whereas maybe a kid without competing might get excited about certain bursts of activity. Somebody with competing has their eye on that prize. And so again, in many ways that might mimic um, a real focus. It might look like a dedication, maybe even a desire to outlast because you're really looking for what's going to get me that prize at the end. And as we're going to talk a little bit about how adults uh, can relate to these talents, I threw Jim Ball said in the chat room that he's seen some of this in his six-year-old. And I asked him, how do you, so what do you do different now that you know this? What do you do different? And he says, um, I make getting ready for bedtime a competition, right? Even getting up the stairs first um, is motivating. Dan Vincent also says he agrees. He says uh, his son's competing isn't necessarily a sports as in sports, right? Oftentimes we think it's a uh, winning in sports. He, he says, I can see him analyze opportunities in advance. And if he thinks he won't win, he won't get involved, which is a, an interesting, I think when we think about winning, sometimes if you do the calculation and you're like, oh, I don't have a chance at this. I'm not even going to participate, right? That may be mm -hmm. that separation when we think about competing. What else can we think about, Mike, as we think about relating as an adult towards this? What else do we think? Well, I think it's all about, and, and this is the entire notion of Strengths Explorer and the best way to use it is how do you notice that in yourself? Now, it might be that you've got high competition and you also love winning through benchmarking. Maybe you've got some other sort of similarities in that there's that strategy aspect, like what Dan mentioned of the ability to analyze a competition ahead of time and put yourself into place of how winnable it is for you. Adult themes might have, you might come from a, a myriad places of, of other sort of motivations and behaviors that would get them to that similar space. So as your strength spotting, as you're thinking about what that looks like, the first thing we always want to do is just pay close attention and careful curiosity to what that means for the child. But also, how do you see yourself reflected in that? It might be that you hear something like Dan saying, where if I if I don't know that I can win, I don't want to get involved. Maybe your bias is to say, well, that's a bad behavior. That's one we need to change. I, I want to say, like, pump the brakes and, and analyze why you would need to change that. Is there, are they truly being unsafe? Are they missing out on something that's going to change their world in a positive way? Or is there power in leaning into that tendency? Um, helping your kid 
talk about and name and and really understand what they bring to the table so that they can choose effectively those times when they're going to be at their best. Um, that's okay. Uh, and so I think it is uh, looking at how these talents, when they show up in children, um, how they make you feel as an adult and being able to say, where's that coming from within me? And is that creating any sort of a, a hurdle that's slowing my kid down from being more of who they are naturally? I think sometimes you, you alluded to this a little bit earlier about we try to make that connection between us and them and relate our themes to them as we see these things. I think we want to be really, really cautious in that area because they're not us. They are them. And if we try to superimpose what we understand competition or competing to be, maybe we have competition and they're showing signs of this competing and a strength spotting or even it was on the assessment mm -hmm. uh, that they took. Um, I still would uh, spend a lot of time understanding that, not making the simple jump uh, from one to the other, but really digging in and asking some great questions and yeah. maybe understanding those motivations to win. And, and I think there's ways we can spend time with them digging those things out from them. It's not going to be easy and it's not even going to be scientific. You're mm -hmm. going to have to just do and see and collect some data and then ask them again. Right. Don't you think? Totally. Totally. Yeah. It's all about just placing them at the forefront. And thankfully yeah. we've got this great tool to help you do it. So it's not just saying know everything you can about the adult tool and then try to maybe relate it to your kids. You've got it right here in front of you. Yeah. And I, I think um, we've got some words when we think about um, describing, they're listening, right? They're <laughs> listening to us. By the way, they're listening to us when we're describing them to other adults. We do this a lot. I did not mm -hmm. realize that as I was talking to my, about my children to other adults, they are listening. What are some positive ways we can affirm them in this? Think about um, how you can describe competing in a way that really shows acceptance and celebration of it. Um, you might call them determined, a winner, a scorekeeper, a measurer, um, results oriented, aware. That one I love. Um, I would also add maybe maybe present and just always paying attention because again, they're aware of how am I doing in relationship to everything around me. Um, motivated, intense, passionate. Um, don't just use these as cover-ups for saying I don't like the behavior that they're they're exuding. I have found that in you know the in the world that I spend most of my time in, which is that of a, a young parent, um, I find that there are trigger words that really mean my kid's driving me crazy. Um, usually it's, oh, they're so strong-willed today, which means uh, we're fighting, right? <laughs> I would challenge you to say, as you're using these words, hear yourself say them and hear what's great about them. My kid's really intense. Okay, uh, excellent. What does that mean? My kid's really passionate. This child is incredibly aware. They're very results oriented. You as a parent or as a teacher or as an adult who loves a kid have the opportunity to help define their power for them every time you talk to other people about them. And you'll notice that if you're in any way connected to a kid, you spend a lot of time talking about them. So um, maybe one of your challenges, this is informal because I didn't write it down in the go do it section, but see how you can sprinkle more of these words in and, and truly mean them. Uh, so Micah, as adults, knowing these kinds of things, what are some things we could be doing? You know, one of the best things that you can give to any person is your focused curiosity. So parents of, often ask me after they've taken this assessment, all right, I know my kid's strengths. What's the right thing to do with them? You know, what do I do next? And I want to encourage you to remember that I don't have the answer. The book doesn't have the answer. Your kid has the answer, so stay curious. I've got a couple questions here that might be just better than how was your day, which my I know my kids are way younger than this assessment is designed for, but um, my child has the soul of about a 78-year-old. So my three-year-old has already hit that point where I say, hey, how was your day? And he says, fine. And I'll say, what'd you do at school? And he says, I don't remember. <laughs> and so I know that those are not questions that inspire a whole lot of commitment to curiosity. So if you've got a child with competing, here's a couple you could try instead. What were you excited about doing today? What are you better at today than you were yesterday? What do you want to get better at? And what challenge could you set for yourself? Who are your best friends right now? And what are you good at? What can we win together? What did you try today? I love those together questions, Micah, by the way, that um, when we think about their competing in the context of those in the relationship with those around them, the most powerful aspect of it may not be their own individual winning, mm -hmm. but the winning that they do with others. 
And this may be a, this may be a key to really developing um, young students and young adults who understand that the best winning is when those that are around them win with them. Um, or area. win differently. You know, competing kids are really good at spotting talent because what they're doing is they're spotting like what's my best foot forward. And so you can you can develop that talent to be, you know, something that notices what other people are great at and maybe doesn't have to be great at that, but can can really flex that muscle about spotting excellence. Yeah. How can we affirm those with, uh, with those that have competing so I mentioned this before, but there's a lot of emotion involved when you see the world through being a winner or a loser. And it's highly likely that for a competing child, they're never anything in between. They're either winning or they're losing. Um, so cultivate an environment that accepts that emotion. Um, maybe your kid needs a moment to sit in the back seat of your car and cry about a loss before she has to join the team for you know a, a post-game pizza celebration. Maybe they need great words that they can use to express the joy of a win when they win that that celebrates it with others and invites other into that joy. Also, I think listen to their feelings when they win and when they lose. Understand that these emotions um, are going to feel raw, but those emotions for that child are going to be what fuels their performance next time. So don't speed past them. Really be there with them and, and listen and maybe reaffirm and even play them back. Knowing that a competing child is constantly and consistently and I think dedicatedly competing, help them do that more on purpose. So maybe you help them learn to measure. Um, one, I think, phrase that is sort of burned into my mind as somebody who works at Gallup is this idea that everything can either be rated, ranked, or sorted. So look for opportunities that they can rate, rank, or sort things. Maybe it's making a note of their best performance, their best score, or their best achievement to date. Um, track big accomplishments, but also track some everyday activities. I like Jim's idea of, you know, how fast can we can we get the chores done at the end of the day? Now, the what's uh, quickly becoming my favorite part of the show is the go do it section that we talked about, or the God owe it, if you read that together. <laughs> the go do it. <laughs> um, if you read that together, and of course, we're documenting these. Uh, Chris is putting them into a spreadsheet. Heather was asking, are we writing some of these things down? We'll include some of these questions in our show notes. So if you're mm -hmm. listening to this on YouTube or the podcast, you head out to coaching.gallop.com find this in in our um on the blog a lot of what we're talking about micah documents in the show notes a so lot of it available. just comes straight from the book too so i can't take credit for all of this i slightly tweak what's already in here so um if you're looking for stuff that's already uh, written down or great collateral to start your clients off so that you're not starting at zero and you can really launch off of that start with the book okay go do a challenge what should we do here's the go do it um, the, this is what can you do this week to invest in your competing child? So there's, there's three pieces, all of them you should be able to do within a week. What I really encourage you to do is just pick one and then stay connected with us on social and tell us what you're doing. Give us your stories. If you're comfortable, even share a picture. Um, I'll post these on Instagram at strengths talk, uh, but, but get, get involved in this piece. Number one, I'm calling it break a record. So throw down a challenge and make your child a part of it. So you might ask how much faster, farther, or better could you do something this week? And it might be learning all your spelling words in one fewer day than it took you or completing a specific chore with a timer going, um, memorizing the names of five new friends, um, one more day spent practicing a musical instrument. So again, that that's sort of involving the measure, the rate, rank, or sort piece, but competing kids love a challenge, so throw one down. Number two, name your specialty. Really help them. We talk about name, claim, and name all the time with adults. Um, I think that naming probably doesn't get as much credit as it deserves sometimes, just being able to say, here's what I bring to the table. So competing does not mean winning everything. You'll probably find, based on theme dynamics, based on situation, based on natural ability, interests, maybe even cultural or community, that there's something that your competing child is really, really good at. So help them name their best potential for winning. And by doing this, I encourage you to use both reflection and forecasting. So look both to the past and to what they're dreaming about in the future and ask them some questions that help them explore their individual version of competing. Are they better alone, as part of a team, 
in a partnership? Is there a specific activity or a specific sport that they're always good at, or maybe even closer to the top than others? Um, also, I think what sort of preparation do they find most beneficial? Are they best when they are jumping into something cold or do they need some, some research behind something or some practice or some cheerleaders? Really helping them hone in on, yeah, you're great at winning, where are you best at winning? And the third challenge is just prepare to win faster. Um, practice a skill that's gonna help you win. So if you're great at basketball, practice dribbling or passing. Um, if you're a musician, practice your scales, practice doing them faster. Um, if you are the best joke teller in your class, learn another one and, and practice getting even better at that. Try different ways to win. And I also think help, help that kid look for easier or quicker shortcuts that get them to the end. Again, we'd love to hear your stories on this, by the way. We throw these out there. We love to get your feedback on it. Uh, Micah mentioned at Strengths Talk on Instagram. She'll be posting those. We'll also be posting those challenges into our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash called to coach. That's our Facebook group. Just ask to join and we'll put you in there. There's about 13 or 12,000 of us in there now talking about these things. We'd love to have that, the feedback. Micah, in your two young ones, are you mm -hmm. spotting any uh, any competing there? So what's really funny here is my, we, my husband has competition um, and I, we grew up together and I thought for a long time that I had competition too. And like, we grew up really, really close to each other. We were in the same very small class in a small town, perhaps the only two people in the small town who were not related to each other. I hope, I mean, our kids have 10 fingers and 10 toes. Anyway, um, I thought when I look back on my, uh, my relationship with him growing up that we were always competing against each other. And I realize now that my style of competing ha has nothing to do with competition. I was competing to win the favor of our teachers, <laughs> of, of other people. Mine was woo the whole time. His was genuine competing, like he wanted to win. And today when we go about projects or we even, I mean, we work out together, but we do it for very different reasons. Um, and I see hints of both in both of our kids. I can definitely tell you, I mean, I'm going to talk for days when we get to presents because our preschoolers has that in spades. Um, he, I'm not so sure is even aware what other people are doing <laughs> on the competing gene, but his one-year-old sister um, definitely has, has a bit of it. So it'll be fun to watch how those two maybe look a lot like mom and dad or maybe just look total opposite. We'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, I, I, for me as well, as a young child, it would have looked like I had, I would have had some of these tendencies that we're talking about, except it wasn't just to win. It was to win more than anybody else ever had. And that's always a maximizer, right? It was <laughs> always like, I can't just win it. I can't just run a marathon. I got to run 50 miles or I just can't, you know, bike. I've got to bike a hundred miles. And, um, and so, you know, for my parents, if I were to go back and give my parents some advice on that, if they would have locked me into some of those things, um, I don't think I'd have been, it would have been as better off. They kind of went with it, right? They mm -hmm. let me live in that environment where that was okay. They didn't always say, oh, Jim, you're taking it to the extreme again. You know, they always, yeah. oh, okay, well, let's. What's it going to take to get there? And they didn't, we didn't have a lot. So they couldn't give me a lot of things to just say, you know, they, they didn't uh, just sign me up in soccer or put me on baseball teams. Although I played those things, um, they didn't have a lot of resources to throw at it, but they, I never, ever heard from my parents. That's crazy. You'll never get there. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I, they, they were always like, oh, okay, well, let's see where this goes. You know, and, and I learned a lot about myself. You and I in the pre-show had a little bit of conversation about the younger me would have quit sometimes or quit a lot. And that actually taught me a lot of things uh, in my adult life. So we'll encourage as you think about these do it, this go do it section that we're doing, uh, try not to zero in or, or you get this glimpse and then you lock in on it. Like this is a very developmental process and it takes time. Um, we've given you some great words to use. But don't don't get too locked in. Let them. The, these children need to experiment. They need to learn. They need to try. Uh, don't don't be so hesitant to lock them in. Even when you get the when you have them take Strengths Explorer and you get the top three report that is there. Don't don't miss the other seven of these that are in this and encourage all that development within all of those. I think that's uh, really really important that you continue to spot around the other seven. Micah, anything else you'd add? You know, I think 
if you're curious about this, you probably deserve some recognition too, because what we're talking about doing is not easy. Letting your kids follow their own gut, follow their own talent, letting them define it different than maybe what yours is, that's hard. So, uh, you know, give yourself some credit. Give yourself a moment to say, wow, I'm I'm really trying to do something phenomenal that's going to make a big difference in who these people are when they're adults. Um, and, and so we want to thank you for being a part of it. Really, the goal of our podcast here is to simply improve the conversations that we have with children to help adults accept and affirm and grow those natural talents within kids. Um, and we would not even be able to start that without the decades of curiosity into what's right with children that come from our good good partners here. So special thanks to Dr. Mary Reckmeyer, Jerlene Mosley, and our own younger than 21 advisor, <laughs> Johnny Liesbelt. Super great. We'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions or comments. Micah, we have yet to really do a blog on this. And maybe this is one of those areas where for the rest of the year here for, for 2019, we could spend some time maybe blogging a little bit about what's going on. This is a great opportunity for you to talk about your experiences working with this, with children, how it's played out. If you got an idea and you you got, we're looking for four to 600 words, uh, on that, that's not that not restricted to that, but uh, send us an email, send us that, write it down, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com, put guest blogger in the subject line, that way they get it routed to Micah, and uh, maybe we can consider that to go on the blog. By the way, brand new mobile functionality on our blog, so if, it's, uh, if you've been on it before and you tried to do it on your phone and you're like, this is awful, yeah, it was pretty awful. We uh, we have fixed we have since fixed that. So grab your phone, head out to coaching.gallup.com and look at the new redesigned site on your phone. I think you're going to like it. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach or learning more about this and how that works, you can go to courses.gallup.com and uh, all the courses that lead to certifications and some that don't are listed there. Don't forget, you can follow us on Eventbrite. So if you want to know all these webcasts and when they're coming up, even more important when I have to cancel them. So last week I had to cancel and I could send everybody, all 65 of you who registered, I could send you an email and say, hey, sorry, don't show up. It's really, really important you register for those kinds of things. We don't we don't really track the numbers that way. We're not going to send you a bunch of marketing, but we uh, it, it allows me to kind of contact you at the last minute when, we, when we, need, we do need to move something. So go to gallup.eventbrite.com and click the follow button and then you'll get notified whenever we launch something new. Get registered for these. So if we do need to change them, and there are some changes coming up, uh, that way I can notify you. Don't forget the 2019 Clifton Strength Summit is uh, is coming closer, June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. You might want to get registered for it now. Prices go up March 15th. Uh, Micah, you got a big hand in the summit this year. Um, you're going to be there, yeah, right? What are you one. doing? My, my big hand is coming, not my small one. <laughs> Sorry, that did sound kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have the the pleasure of really working more behind the scenes this year, but getting to help our Gallup breakout presenters um, maximize what they're doing. I just yeah. get to another smart way or kinder, less, maybe less kind way of saying that is I get to be super picky with my friends. <laughs> I get to That's do some maximizing awesome. with people I already know. No, and I think, I think we can say this. We're going to do a special breakout at the very end of the summit. So... On the fifth, can we say this? Are we? Are we I I don't know what you just said. You just cut out. Oh, <laughs> so are you saying no? I can't, or can I? Can I say? Let's this? do it. Let's tell them. There's going to be a special surprise from Jim After, and Micah at the afternoon close of the, of the fifth. A live yeah. call to coach theme Thursday. So if you're coming, you want to stay late. Don't don't book that flight for two o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday. We want you to join us for our live call to coach session. Will be will actually not. It will be an actual call to coach. And we will be broadcasting. So that's uh, uh, pretty cool. That's coming up. Last day of the summit. Get signed up and registered. We'll, we'll be sad if you don't come out. CliftonStrengthSummit.com. Again, prices go up for everybody March 15th. So get that locked in. A busy week here in Omaha. Love to have you. Don't forget to join us on the Facebook group as well. Facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. Lots of great stuff going on out there. And we want your go do it uh, statements out there as well. I want to thank you for joining us today. If you're listening live, stay around for the post show and then stay around for the community update show as well. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.